all confused. Like, I was... I thought I saw something that wasn't happening. Body cam video shows the aftermath of a bloody crime scene at the home of a Wisconsin woman who's now in prison for stabbing her ex-boyfriend more than a dozen times with a pair of scissors. 22-year-old Morgan Lund was sentenced in November for stabbing her ex and the father of her child 19 times while he was sleeping on the couch back in February. In body cam footage obtained by Law & Crime, officers arrived to the scene to find the victim lying on the couch begging for help as Morgan stands near him covered in blood. All right, is it just the three of you? Okay. The ambulance is downstairs. Uh -huh. The officer then pulls Morgan to the side to get more information from her as the victim continues pleading for help. Have you got shoes or something you can... No, oh, they're downstairs. Okay. They're coming. Can we go? We gotta go, we gotta go. Yep, medics are coming. Is this your stuff? Yeah. Do you have an ID in here? Um, no, it's in the car. Morgan. Even oh, come on. What is your it's name? Morgan Lund. It's unclear when, but during this time, emergency crews seemingly tend to Morgan's ex-boyfriend's injuries. Portions of the audio were redacted from the video, but Morgan can be seen visibly distraught while begging the officer to let her speak with her father. Oh. Morgan, can you tell me a little bit more about... No! No? <laughs> and why is that? Do you feel... No. Why, why are you saying no? I don't understand what you're reacting to right now. Are you just scared about the situation or do you not want to talk to me? I want my dad, I want my dad to come here. Okay, I understand that, but you're, you're an adult. So I need you to make your own decision about whether or not you're going to talk to me, okay? What? What do I need to tell you? <clears throat> the questions that I was asking, what kind of... She then explains to the officer she thought she saw a mysterious figure when she attacked her ex-boyfriend while he slept. I was, I was sleeping and then it, I don't know, I was like half awake. I bring her out here every morning to keep her. Uh-huh. And I mean, I've seen the same thing before. I've You've never seen done the same anything thing? like that. <clears throat> you have seen the same thing before. Okay. Have you ever had any kind of medical treatment no. for anything like that? Uh -uh. Have you seen a doctor, a psychologist, counselor, no, I anything I like that? I didn't do embarrass to talk to anybody. Okay. It was that I didn't I didn't get much sleep last night. I don't know why. Okay. And I felt any like that was sleep. <laughs> and you and you what? I finally fell asleep and I was seeing all these weird things. But you don't remember coming back out, but you do remember seeing something. Yeah, it was like, it was like in my head though, I don't, it wasn't real. And that's what I was like, what is going on? I didn't know what was happening. Can you describe for me what you saw? Did you get the scissors on No, it's still there. I'm, and then he was yeah, like, okay. yeah, I felt like, like, I don't know what, but it was like, then I was like, is he attacking the thing that I saw? I don't know, I was all confused. Like I was, I thought I saw something that wasn't happening. Shortly after, another officer takes photos of Morgan, whose hands, clothes, legs, and feet appear to be covered in blood. Then the officer continues his questioning, where Morgan explains she had been suffering from hallucinations and experiencing mental health issues, adding she had an out-of-body experience during the incident. You usually see the same thing? If you had to physically describe what you were seeing, like 
big or small, black or white, gray, blue, whatever. Like a blob. Like a blob. Like a black blob. Like a blob, but like a finger. Okay. I don't know. I have something. I have something. Do you see a dark figure? But it doesn't look like a person. Yeah. Am I understanding that right? It's just sort of the the shape. And I can hear. I can hear. I can hear him. Yeah. Who? And then I came out and I saw something like over him. So I don't know like what was like real and what's not real. What okay. Was, I don't know if I was dreaming. But the other experiences that you've had have been when you were awake? Yeah, we're like half awake. Okay. <laughs> right before you went to bed or right after you woke up? Both. Both. But no, it's usually... I would never do that. I would never right. do that to him. <laughs> but it's usually that same sort of dark figure that you see? Yeah, but it's like, it's like... It's, there's some, it's something in my head. It's, it's not like... I don't know how to explain it. But when you see it, your heart beats really fast and you, you feel afraid. Okay. And I, I just feel like, like something's taking over me. Like, I don't know, and now it's like everything's normal. And that happens every time. <sighs> what is going on? the Mental Health Institute, <laughs> and I feel like ever since I started working there, like, because I talk to the patients a lot, and I feel like it's just, like, like getting in my head, <laughs> and I've, ta I've talked to people at work about it without, like, saying anything, like, I've been, like, is it, like, do people ever get affected by this, and, like, have you ever seen anybody that works here be affected by it, and they, like, all of them have said that, yeah, like, they see people be affected by it, or, like, I don't know, and I just feel like something, something just changed in me since then. As Morgan continues to speak with police, another officer arrives on scene to speak with Morgan's brother, Ethan, who was staying the night at the couple's home on the night of the stabbing and called 911. Ethan, while holding Morgan's crying child, tells the officer he was sleeping when he heard Morgan and her ex in what he thought was another verbal argument. I thought they were just fighting like normal. And it starts getting loud, loud. What the hell? Was he screaming back at her? <sighs> it was kind of like a... Off me, help. I, I just got and that was him it. saying that? I don't even remember. Okay. And open the door. They're on top of each other. Honestly, what do you mean? On, so they both were on top of each other? He was like on top of her trying to take the knife out of her hand or something. I don't know. Okay. So, he, okay, how was she positioned? Like when you say when he was on top of her, was he like straddling her? Yeah, he like had a wrist down. And then holding a wrist, like straddling yeah. her like that? Yeah. Okay. And then. Was he bleeding already at that time? Yeah. Where was he bleeding? Where'd you see? His arm and stuff, and then I had seen the couch. Help. Go over there. I don't even know. She's, that was like when it was ending. Okay. Was she saying anything at this time? She's just freaking out. I don't know. She's saying she doesn't know what happened. She, that she was seeing stuff, having a dream or something, and then realized it was real. Okay. Does she suffer from mental health? I think since she's had a kid because they that's their kid yeah and then I just went out there ran okay. the call the cops Ethan goes on to tell the officer a similar story to Morgan's she thought she saw something in her head but Ethan also revealed to police that Morgan and her then boyfriend were experiencing a lot of relationship issues and that fighting between the two wasn't uncommon okay did she say it, it might have been a dream or go back into that yeah she, she's kind of saying like she was Something like as I'm calling you guys that she's like dreaming or something and then like uh, seeing something in her head. I don't really know. And you were here in assistant bedroom? That's that's where he stays. He doesn't live here, okay. but he stays here. Yes. Um, and you said that 
she might have some mental health issues since she's had a kid. To explain to that. Have you seen a change in behavior? Um, I think just a bit of maybe postpartum depression, maybe, or okay. just but, you, but you've seen a change in depression, change in personality. Um, maybe not a change in personality, but oh, sit there. she. Uh, you're not getting me in those, are you? No. Okay. They got a lot of relationship problems. Okay. So. Okay. So this is this fighting minus the actual injuries is not uncommon. No. So they argue a lot. Yes. Are they physical a lot? No. No, just verbal arguments a lot. Yeah. Okay. Ethan says he never saw the actual stabbing, only the aftermath. The officer later puts a pause on questioning Ethan so he can tend to Morgan and the victim's child who continue to cry. Then the officer briefly observed the scene, noting just how bloody it was. You got all this bladder? It's on the kid toy over here too. Yeah, I got that. Meanwhile, a frantic Morgan continues speaking with police who inform her she's under arrest and they have to take her to the police station. Minutes later, she tearfully pleads with officers, asking what will happen next. You know yeah. what's gonna happen. We don't know, actually. Genuinely, like, we don't know. Like, what's most likely in this, in this? We don't ever know, yeah. to be honest. Like, we'd be lying to you. Like, we've seen before. My dad worked for a prison for so long, and I work at the mental health institute. I, I've seen, like, things like this, and I, I just want to know, like, what's most likely gonna happen to me. I've been doing this for 12 years, and I've never been in this situation before. Yeah. So this exact situation, and I mean, each like, one is a little bit different, so but okay. this exact what, situation... What I will ask, not to intervene, is yeah. your mom and dad are outside, they're going to so take gonna the little one. Me. Is it possible, Miles, to cuff her at the vehicle? Sure, where is it? They're yeah, outside. Do okay. they're just, I just don't want them to see yep. her being cuffed. Are you okay? Yeah, I don't that? want them to see Okay, um, right. we'll just walk with you and then go from there. I would just ask, just don't, don't really talk or anything to them at this point. Um, we'll allow that later, okay? So we can they can come in and... Yeah, we'll, we'll work with you. Okay. As the officers walk her to the squad car, Morgan can be heard crying, asking her father for help as he tries to figure out what even happened. Shortly after, Morgan's placed in cuffs and taken to the police station, where her brother Ethan is already in an interview room and gave a written statement to police before going over his account of what happened with detectives. So you guys all kind of came home around the same time? <laughs> yeah, but I never saw him. Okay. Lay in their bedroom? Or... Yeah, well, I'm pretty sure you're sleeping on a couch. Do you know why he's sleeping on a couch? Or? Just because they're arguing, I'm guessing. Okay. So they're arguing a lot then, or? Uh, I don't know, I think they're just breaking up or something. But they only argue, like, I don't know, when something goes wrong, I guess, I don't know. Okay. Do you know why they're breaking up, or? Uh, I don't think she feels like he's treating her, like, right. Any issues with uh, her thoughts on how he's treating the baby? Uh, not that I know of. Okay. Have you ever seen their relationship get physical? No. Okay. Do anything to her physically, anything? No. So when they're arguing, they're just verbally arguing? How often uh, since you've been there has he been sleeping on the couch? Uh, I say, I don't want to give the wrong time, but probably a month or so, something like that. Okay, and that's like all the time he's been sleeping on the couch, yeah. not just once here and there? I don't know if he occasionally goes and sleeps in the room or something. Ethan tells the detective his sister has been suffering from postpartum depression since she had her child nearly a year ago. And the baby's 11 months old? Yeah, she's almost one. Okay. So was she talking about that before the baby was born or while she was pregnant? Or? No. I, I never really seen her when she was pregnant, but okay. I don't know that I know. So after the baby was born, what was she talking about? Just uh, whenever would be hanging out or whatever, me, her, and her boyfriend. And, like, if she would get sad or something, she would bring it up. And, uh, I don't know, just 
and not up with it. We didn't know, you know, if she's just saying this or what, but and she definitely started acting way different. Can what? you kind of explain what that, what that acting was, or? Um, just, just like maybe her mood overall and how she's going about her day, and not being as active, and just really showing her emotions, I guess. So, uh, and I don't want to put words in your mouth. I'm just trying to figure out what you're saying, like. Is she kind of a flat effect, or is she really emotional, or what? What is it that you're seeing? Um, it's like she'll be crying out of the blue or something, or yelling, which is just stuff I've never seen. Okay. So that's, that's stuff like that that's different from when we lived with my mom in high school and stuff. She wasn't like that. Okay. So kind of out of nowhere, she just started crying. Has she gone to the doctor a lot for her? I am not sure if she's ever gone to the doctor, but okay. she's told me and my family members about it. Okay. Has she talked about seeing images or things or anything? I don't think so. No? Just today, when she was saying she was seeing something. I heard her when, when I was in the spare bedroom after all the cops and stuff. I heard her talking to one of the cops saying that she... Okay. But when I was on the phone, she was saying, like, uh, I don't know what was going on. Like, I didn't mean it. I think I was dreaming. Like, I didn't have control. Just something along the lines of that. Okay. Have you seen or heard them talk about breaking up or what that status is? Or? Yeah, I mean, they're, uh, they're definitely breaking up. Like, I think their uh, lease is up in, I want to say, June 1st, maybe, and okay. then both try and get their own apartment, I think. Okay, so they've basically broken up, yeah. but they're together at that house because... Yeah, like co-parenting right now or something. Okay. And how long has that been going on? <clears throat> that they've basically broken up and decided they're going their separate ways? Uh, I mean, it's hard to tell because they're so on and off, but I'd say definitely a solid month that they've been distant. And while Ethan says he saw something in Morgan's hand when she attacked her boyfriend at the time, he couldn't narrow down what the weapon was, as he initially thought it was a butter knife. Ethan wraps up his interview telling police he was in shock that the incident happened, adding he's never seen that amount of blood before. I'm sure you've seen some blood in hockey, right? Not that much. Though. No, probably not that much. But At this point, Morgan is now in a police interrogation herself, being read her Miranda rights. After the detective asks Morgan if she wants a lawyer present, unsure what to do, Morgan again asks the detective if she can call her father, who advises on the phone to hold tight. And you're not yourself. You're not, you're not yourself. You didn't do this on purpose. <laughs> you know? I did it on purpose. Was he sleeping? I don't know. I was like, I was like half asleep. I know. You, were you having a dream? <laughs> Yeah, I was like, like I was having a dream, and then I was like half awake. Oh, the living room. Yeah. And then I, I woke up again, and I was like half asleep, and I was like seeing things, but I was like, I don't know. There's like something in my head that like makes me not who I am. Did your doctor give you any medicine? No. No. Can I come there as her? Like, she has a representative with her. Can I come there with her? Um, sure, if you want. The video then shows Morgan in the police interview room for about half an hour waiting for her father to arrive. Once he arrives, he explains to the officer while Morgan has been suffering from mental health issues and postpartum, nothing this violent had ever happened before. How, how much do you know about what's happened this morning? Not too much. Um, my son called me a couple times, I didn't answer, and I, when I called him back, I think he was probably calling you guys and stuff. But he said she was like sleeping and she had a bad dream, or she said she didn't know where she was and stuff, and she didn't know what was going on. Um, she's been having like, she's had postpartum depression since she had the baby, and my, my wife was a social worker for years, and like program director and stuff, and she kept saying like she's got, she's having like mental health issues, and I, it was, 
I would bounce around it with her, but I didn't want to like accuse her of having like mental problems and stuff. So I would, I never pushed it far enough to like make her go get help. Okay. Um, but as far as today goes, like he, he Ethan said, and, and I saw her too. It was like she wasn't even. It seemed like she wasn't even there. Like she's never like grabbed a weapon and done anything like that before. And, um, She's just been, like, I know she's been crying out of the blue, like, she'll just start bawling for, like, nothing's going on, and she'll just start bawling. Like, she's, when I say she said weird things to me, she'll be, she'll say weird things to me, and I don't, I don't say anything, I just let it go, because I know she's having, like, mental issues, so I don't want to say the wrong thing. What do you mean by weird things? Just, oh, just weird, like, she'll not, just talking about, or weird stuff, like, I don't know, like, I, I can't think of a specific example. Just okay. like, like it's weird, not not like weird, crazy stuff, but like talking about stuff that we weren't talking about or something. And like, it's just like, okay. she's different. She's way different. You know, I'm pissed at myself because we wanted her to get a good job and everything. And now she's like, now that this happened, I'm thinking, I told my wife, how stupid are we? Like we encouraged her to go work at the mental health facility because my wife was a program director there for a long time. Okay. And we thought it's a great job. It's a state job. I ran a prison for a living, so we're like, we know it's a good job. We never, I never thought for one second about like the stuff that she was going to be reading and hearing about and people she was going to be talking to when she's having her own issues already. It was stupid. I never even thought about that. But I can tell you right now, she's never grabbed a weapon and done anything. I was shocked when he called me. It just, it doesn't make any sense. I don't exactly know what happened, but I just don't, it doesn't make any sense, but I know I can tell you 100,000% she's been totally different since she had her baby and she's okay. never gotten any help for it. The body cam video ends with the officer telling Morgan her father had gotten a hold of an attorney. She was ultimately arrested for the violent slashing and at the time charged with attempted first degree intentional homicide. According to court documents, Morgan's ex-boyfriend, who survived the incident, told police she had been physically abusive throughout the duration of their relationship, even threatening him in the past. He said he didn't know why she stabbed him, especially in front of their daughter. Morgan initially pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity back in March, but later pleaded no contest to aggravated battery and second degree endangering safety. In November, a Wisconsin judge sentenced her to seven years behind bars, plus five years of extended supervision. Reporting for Law and Crime, I'm Elizabeth Milner.